Hi, ladies and gentlemen. So I'm here together with Oriana Kraft, the founder of Fem Technology Summit. And uh, Oriana, thank you for spending time with us for this interview. I hope you'll enjoy it. So, um, can you tell us a bit about uh, the Fem Technology Summit? How it started? Where it started? How was it? What experience do you have from it? Yeah, so it started uh, at ETH Zurich. It was my bachelor's thesis in medicine. Really organically, actually. In gynecology class, I was introduced to a lot of the shocking stats around women's health. And having studied at ETH, was always fascinated by how digital solutions could help improve the patient journey. But it didn't seem like anything was happening in women's health in that space, or at least we weren't learning about it in class. So I started Googling what was bridging that gap, and I came across Femtech. And at ETH, in medicine, you have the option to do a bachelor's thesis. And so I pitched my professor, instead of working in a lab, because I'm not work good at working in a lab, uh, doing a conference, bringing together clinicians, Femtech startups, researchers, and at the time, university students. and. Two years ago, not as many people were talking about women's health, and so a lot of people organically attended virtually, and then people kept asking me when I was going to do a next one, and we had 1,500 people attend from over 60 countries last year, and this year we're doing it in collaboration with Roche. So. Oh, that's nice to hear. But what kind of people were part of the Femtechs? I mean, what, what did they represent? Startups, innovation projects, what were the main uh, stakeholders? Yeah, so it was mostly femtech startups and moderated each time by researchers and like the keynotes were clinicians. So the idea was really to have it like at kind of each stage of, okay. of the journey. So since mainly there were startups in the Femtech Summit and now you're doing the summit at Roche, what do you think of a collaboration between corporates such as Roche or like big pharma giants? and startups. Do you have a take on that? I mean, so the main obstacle femtech startups face, because they're usually founded by women and also women's health has been traditionally underinvested in, the main obstacle they face is a lack of funding and large corporates have funding. So I think it's a, a nice so it's opportunity. It's purely a financial opportunity? No, I think that they also have the ability to move more agilely, right? And mm -hmm. I think they're like much closer to the to women themselves. And so they understand the needs and can kind of shape the conversation in a different way. I think there's multiple opportunities. So do you think this collaboration is mainly beneficial in the healthcare industry or do you see other industries where startups can collaborate with uh, corporates? Or is it mainly crucial for digital health innovation and it's very important on that stage? I mean, I think startups and corporates do collaborate in other industries. Mm -hmm. I think in industries where it's a much heavier lift, like sustainability or health, that's where sort of like social governance can come into play as well. I think there's so many different stakeholders involved. You kind of need everybody at the table to actually make anything happen. So being in touch with so many startups in Femtech, do you think they perceive this collaboration as a threat or as an opportunity for them? No, I think they're actually, they are very excited about it because they have a hard time sometimes making cases to investors mm -hmm. and investors want to see that other people are motivated. They want to see that they're not the first mover. And so the more people are moving, the easier it is for startups to move as well. Uh, what about you? Have you thought about founding a startup? Yeah, I have. And so basically it's aggregating women's health solutions for employers to offer as employee benefits. Right now, there's been a lot of innovation happening in fertility and pregnancy, mm -hmm. but only 10% of women are actively thinking about starting a family and the healthcare in general wasn't designed with women in mind. So that means that they're actually not getting the, the care that they need, but employers don't want to deal with point solutions and femtech startups can't sell into employers because they're like, you're too small. And so it kind of needs like a, a middle layer, or a care navigation platform. So do you think that hosting the femtech summit has helped you towards realizing that you actually want to be a founder? I would like to bring innovation more directly to patients themselves. And also that's what we see with the university series is like people are writing down the names of these startups manually. And then startups have a really high cost of customer acquisition. So it just kind of yeah, makes sense. Thank you, Oriana, for this very Thank insightful you. interview.